today's video we're going to do a uh, pizza cutter. It's from Rockler. It's the heavy duty one. Uh, it's actually really a good pizza cutter. I had a piece of rosewood that I had left over. Uh, I can't remember what the other piece was. But uh, there's the uh, pizza cutter from Rockler. It's very heavy duty. Uh, very heavy actually. Uh, instructions comes with a Allen wrench to put the insert in. Uh, you're going to have to drill a hole into the blank and then the uh, hex head wrench helps put the uh, insert in. It's a threaded insert. You can see it's a pretty big cutter and then the insert just threads in once the blank is done. And it just goes in, put it on, just drill it in, center, almost like a, uh, you would a uh, pen blank. I got a mandrel for it, I thought that would help size the um, blank itself going into the pizza cutter. So we just kind of start out again like a pen blank, get the center done, and like all blanks, they're not perfectly squared. I took a uh, self-centering punch. You can see it, uh, the lines on it aren't quite there. Uh, kind of line it up and whack a indentation in it. Then we'll go over to the drill get it drilled out once we get it on the lathe and we're gonna get it lined up a little better than that there we go so I start off and uh, start getting it round and then get a um, tenon on it the rosewood works really well I like uh, rosewood Bacotti um, this piece of uh, rosewood was really nice to turn, no problems whatsoever with it. I made a little tenon and realized that it was too small, so I made another one, flipped it around, got it tightened up, and then got it back down to round, started figuring out what I needed as far as size goes. Uh, the mandrel will help at the end when I uh, flip it around once again. But I get the thing uh, back round, get it all straightened up, get it about where I want to go. Nice uh, grip on it. At the uh, front is going to be where the where I'm working right now. You can kind of drill this thing out about any time you want. You probably drill it out, mounting it up, and then drill it. But uh, for some reason, I just chose to get this thing rounded down and get it uh, kind of shaped up before I put a drill in it. But I'm fixing to do that right now. You can see the grain on the rosewood is, is uh, coming out. Uh, turned out really well once it was polished and uh, sanded up. But uh, the drill bit is a half inch. They recommend a half inch for hardwood and a 7 16 for softwood. Um, I don't really use any softwood. Uh, they also recommend an inch and a half deep. I think I put about an inch and three quarter, put a piece of blue tape on it. Uh, to make sure I don't I go in deep enough but not so deep and then just slowly drilled it in make sure I cleaned it out a couple times uh, make sure nothing was stuck in the flute to impair it and it drilled out very nice again it was a really nice piece of uh, rosewood and so we got it drilled out and then put the um, insert in, and 
and I used the long end of the hex to kind of line it up and get it started and then once it did it pretty easily went in. I want to make sure that the hole is not really small. It very easily could split that wood because it is self-tapping. And then I went over and I wanted to glue it in and get it glued in. So as usual, I put the um, scale to it and measured up the uh, epoxies, both of them. I think this one was about eight or eight grams each. Mix it up real good, stuck it in. Got, uh, got my denatured alcohol rag ready. Put it in and then we just kind of wait for it to dry. I put another center on the other end of it. Once it was dried, I took a Jacob's chuck with a number two uh, Morse taper and put the mandrel in it. And you'll see a problem come up at the end with it. So I got it squared away. Again, the um, mandrel side what I'm working right now is where the pizza cutter go so I wanted to get it down to where um, the bushing was so I was working on that and I wanted to have a little indentation and then I shaped going all the way back again it was pretty easy to, to work then I started working on the end of it I wanted to come up with a little bead on the end, actually a rather large bead, but um, kind of end it with the bead. So I just started smoothing the blank out once everything was positioned and get it and then started working this down to get it rounded. And I'm just slowly working it down. And I get it down to where something else is going to have to happen. So I pulled it off and just tried to simply work it off with the carbide tip. You see it bump and you'll see it move again. I'm going sideways, there it goes. So I stop and I grab the Jacob's Chuck and try to twist it, kind of get it seated in more. But the problem with it is that once there's a little side pressure, especially all the way to the end, there's leverage on it. So you get a little side pressure, and it's going to come loose again. There it is. Yep, see how loose it's coming. So I stop it, jam it back in again, then I try to use a parting tool. Let's get this thing off of here as quickly as possible. But you see it moving again, and it moved out. So I'm jamming it back in, and it's getting loose again. And I'm trying to get this thing off. So I got it off, and then I took a razor knife and I cut the cut the nib of it off square and then once I got it all cleaned up and everything I took some 600 sandpaper or some 230 sandpaper on it then I put the live center back into it and started sandpaper and all of it I started off with I think 180 wanted to get the lines out of it and get it smoothed up and uh, make sure that bead in the back and the front had good transition. And you can see everything steady and the Morse tapers holding fine with a little bit of pressure. Didn't need much. Then I think the next one was a, a 230 on the sandpaper. You can see the grain really looking good. Again, rosewood is one of my favorite uh, woods, or getting to be anyway. Um, and I take a little bit of denatured alcohol 
to make sure all the grit and any kind of fuzz or anything is off of it. Kind of stand it up a little bit. Stand the grain up a little bit. And then I put some sanding sealer on. I could put two or three coats of sanding sealer on. It absorbed it pretty good. And then once that was done, I started with the friction polish. And I believe I put like three of the friction polish in. And now heating it up to get it set. Yeah, I think I put another one in there. Got it set. A little bit of heat on it, yep. Yeah, it turns out you can really see the grain. Shined up nice, really looked nice. The grain on it really stood out. Made a nice little handle. Turned out good. And then at the end I put some 600 sandpaper on the that nib on the end of it and put a little sanding polish uh, or a sanding sealer on it and then put a little friction polish and just kind of rubbed it in on the end to get it finished off too. I didn't really want to take a chance and back that live center off and try to do something with it. But put it together is pretty easy. Again, you can see the grain really came out nice on it. And the transitions were uh, very nice. And it goes together just about as simple as you can get. Just screw the thing in. Now, I think that mandrel helped quite a bit too. Uh, the the uh, transition between the blank or the wood and the uh, pizza cutter itself turned out really nice. Very nice transition with it. So again, turned out really good. What I want to do now is I want to kind of set the handle. I thought about using some epoxy, but the way that that thing fit, I figured let's just use a little CA on it. And um, if, we ever had to, if it ever came apart, then I'd do a little boxing on it. But just a real quick CA, you don't need a lot. Let it get into the threads. And put it together and cinch it up. And good shape. Nice little pizza cutter. Now the next video I'm going to address the uh, problem with that Morse taper floating out on me and how I fixed it. There's actually a couple ways, but uh, I'm going to go into another video on how I fixed it. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit that bell so you can get the next one. Uh, more videos to come. Thanks for stopping by and please keep in touch.